In that case, we can move on to sentence word. Let's focus on the task of or the type of tasks that take as input a sentence pair. You give me two sentences, and I'm going to tell you how similar they are to each other. How would Bert approach solving such a problem? You would take sentence one, you would concatenate it with sentence two, you would put a separation token in between, and then you're going to push everything through the Bert model. And then out of Bert, you're going to perhaps look at the entry on top of the classification token. And then you're going to put a small head on top of that. And then you're going to report the similarity score, which is basically a regression task. How similar are these two sentences together? And then you're going to do your fine tuning. So the bulk of the architecture is just Bert. You put a small head on top of the classification token, which is going to output a score, which is going to take you from dimension, I guess, 786 to dimension one using a matrix vector multiplication. Okay? That's how BERT is going to approach it. But let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's say you have 10,000 sentences and your task is to find the most similar pair of sentences among those 10,000 sentences. So basically, among those 10,000 sentences, which pair are the most similar? You're going to do or choose two out of n. So you're just going to keep choosing pairs of sentences out of 10,000 sentences. You're going to push them through BERT, and then that's going to give you a similarity score. BERT is a huge model, and that's going to take you 65 hours, approximately, to solve that problem. And why would you do that? Because this is actually what you would do if you want to design an information retrieval algorithm, or if you are searching for something on the internet. You have a lot of data sets, and then you have a question, and then you want to know the answer. Or another one is, how similar are these two sentences together, which is the semantic textual similarity task. So it's going to end up being expensive, computationally speaking. Another idea is to take a sentence, any of these 10,000 sentences, take it, push it through your BERT individually, and BERT is going to give you a vector in the end. And that vector could be the average of all of the vectors that are coming out of a BERT model, because we know that BERT is going to take a sequence of vectors as input. It's going to output a sequence of vectors. We can do a summation over the outputted sequence of vectors, and that's going to be the average pooling to give you a single vector. The other one is you look at your CLS token, you follow it up until the last layer, and then you read off that vector. Okay, why is it useful now? We can take sentence one, vectorize it. You can take sentence two, vectorize it. Or you can just take all of these 10,000 sentences, vectorize them once. So you just have a for loop over 10,000 sentences. Now that you have the corresponding vectors for each one of them, you can start comparing the cosine similarity between those vectors, which is going to end up being much cheaper to compute. You, you are no longer pushing your sentences through BERT. You are just comparing a bunch of vectors together. You still have these many uh, comparisons, but each one is going to take you a fraction of a millisecond. And then that's, in total, is going to give you five seconds. That's how much it's going to take you. Okay, Beautiful idea. You take it to the computer, you implement it, and it's not going to give you the result that you want, because usually, the vectors that are coming out of the BERT model are bad sequence embeddings. They are not good at distinguishing one, certain, one sentence versus another sentence. BERT is basically trained to give you uh, masked tokens to answer that question. What token did I mask within a sentence? It's not good at comparing sentences. And it's even worse than averaging the glove embeddings. You can take your sentence, look at the glove embeddings for each token in that sentence, average them up, which is just a bag of words, and that's going to give you better results. And here are the actual results. Average glove embeddings on different semantic textual similarity tasks in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is part of 
Blue Benchmark, SDSB, is giving you better results compared to BERT. What is going on? Can you actually make things better? There is another catch also. If you take sentences, all of these sentences, or maybe you have a lot of other sentences, you push them through the BERT architecture, vectorize them, you take those vectors and you want to cluster them, BERT is not going to be good at clustering. So what is the solution here? How can you make things better? We know that we have this natural language inference task, which is just a classification task. Are these two sentences following each other? Are they contradiction? Are they neutral to each other? You can take a pair of sentences, push them through BERT. It's the same BERT. So these two are the same architecture, the same parameters. You do your pooling in the end. It's going to give you two vectors. You do some feature engineering here. I'm going to explain you where this idea came from. On top of that, you're going to put a softmax classifier, which is just a logistic regression on top of it. And then it's going to classify between neutral contradiction and entailment. And then you fine tune it. You fine tune on this task. Now you go to the actual task that you're interested in, which is a regression task. How would you solve that problem? You take the model that you fine tuned, you take two sentences, push them through this architecture, look at the cosine similarity between these two vectors, U and V, that's gonna give you a score that you can compare to the ground truth. And usually for STSB, the similarity is a score between zero to five. So you have to do some modifications here. Maybe shift your labels so that they're gonna be in the interval from negative one to one rather than being from zero to five. And then you write down your regression loss, which could be L2 or which could be a smooth L1. You can either train this or you can decide not to train at all, not to fine tune at all on the semantic textual similarity task. And that's going to end up being unsupervised. And these are the results that you're going to get. If you use BERT or Roberta type of architecture, it's not Roberta has the same architecture as BERT, both of them are transformers, but Roberta is trained on more data and it doesn't have that uh, next sentence prediction task while training. So it's going to do much better. Some more studies, this was unsupervised. If you consider the supervised case, what can happen? Up until this point of the table, is very similar to what you have over there. You are just taking sentence BERT, which is this architecture, and fine tuning it on a natural language inference task. And that's going to give you good numbers. But if you do some fine tuning on this other task as well, for instance, if you're training on uh, semantic textual similarity task directly without even doing a natural language inference, you're going to get some improvements and they're actually comparable to BERT while being much cheaper when it comes to inference time. If you do pre-training on natural language inference task and then you move on to another round of fine tuning on sentence text or semantic textual similarity task, things are going to even improve better. So I still owe you, owe you something. I owe you where did this come from? And that's coming out of uh, your validation data. You have a couple of options to combine the two vectors that are coming out of sentence A and sentence B. You write down your options. One of the options is just concatenate them. The other option is look at the absolute value of the two. The other one is multiply them pointwise. Multiply them pointwise and the absolute value of the subtraction, etc. And then out of those, this one is giving you the best number, and that's what you're gonna be using when it comes to natural language inference. The other one, the other choices that you had here for your pooling operation, should I do the averaging of those vectors? Should I pick the maximum value per each entry? Or should I just look at the classification token and the vector that is coming on top of it? And the average pooling is giving you the best result. So that's how you choose your pooling and this kind of calculation strategy. Any questions? about sentence bird. Was everything clear? Okay, awesome.